we have a quorum, could we please have the roll call, Mr. Chief Deputy City Clerk? Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> Mayor Sticks. Here. Council Member Lang. Here. And Council Member Rule. Here. And Council Member Francina is absent, as well as Mayor Pro Tem Whitman is absent. Yes. Thank you for that. And uh, just an announcement, uh, Council Member Whitman is watching online. He's not able to uh, participate because of a work conflict. And Councilmember Francina also has a conflict, so she will not be able to be here either. Um, uh, Mr. Chief Deputy City Clerk, it'll come down. It'll, I'll get it. <laughs> Could you please say uh, the pledge for us? It would be an honor, Mayor. Thank you. But everyone, please rise if you are able. Our flag is in the back of the room here where we are facing. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And welcome everyone to the special meeting, the Ojai City Council, Thursday, February 15th. Um, it's a, we have one action item, a fiscal year 2023-24 mid-year budget review. So uh, staff, we have a, a presentation. Mayor, if I may. Oh, can yes. we get an approval of the agenda? I am so sorry. Once again, too excited to get going. Okay. <laughs> um, is there a motion to approve the agenda? I'll move to approve it. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Now, presentation. Thank you, staff, for being here. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, before I hand things over to the assistant city manager and the finance director, I just wanted to set the table uh, this morning a little bit. So first of all, I want to thank uh, the council for, for being able to convene on short notice. I, I do appreciate that. You're very busy. Uh, and this is you know yet another thing that we're asking of you. I want to thank the public for being present as well on, on short notice. Um, and I have spoken with some of you about you know, you know, the, the amount of time that public has had to digest the material and, and, and review it and be prepared to speak. And that's why I want to say a few words. Um, I've not been here for very long, obviously, just since the end of last month. And one of the uh, observations I've made in my short time here is that, you know, we're, we're a small but, but mighty staff, um, but we have a lot of um, process improvements uh, that we're going to be undergoing in, a, in an effort to further professionalize ourselves. Um, my assistant city manager has a background, uh, you know, in, on top of the finance director in, in finance. Uh, Mr. Almeida has been an administrative services director. He's been a finance director. So one of the things uh, that he let me know immediately when I came on board was that, hey, you know, it's not been a recent practice of this city to do a mid-year budget update. And he informed me, so I, I you know, I've started the the process, I, I intend to do it um, on top of everything else that, you know, he is tasked with and, and, and the finance director works on. So admittedly, um, you know, in a perfect world, I would have liked to, you know, publish this information weeks in advance, put this out so everybody had a chance to, to go through it. Um, but candidly, we're bumping up against already next year's budget process. In fact, the next special meeting we have will be a goal session so that we can galvanize what our priorities are and, and bake them into next year's budget. So I'm trying to not blur lines with this fiscal year and the upcoming fiscal year, and I've got a very compressed time in which to do so. So this is a jumping off point, um, and we will be doing this as a practice going forward, um, but it's a lot for, for right now. The, the, the good news, there are several pieces of good news. And you're going to hear more about this uh, from the assistant city manager as he delivers the presentation, of which uh, there's a hard copy available for those of you that want that. Uh, so it makes it easier to digest. The good news is, uh, fiscally, the city is healthy. Okay. The good news is, you know, trends for revenues and expenditures are going in a, in a, in a positive direction. The good news is primarily we're here today to catch up on direction that you already provided, but we haven't yet put into this year's fiscal budget. So we need to have the budget reflect what you've already told us to do. And there are some minor adjustments from observations that, that staff has made that we need to finish out the fiscal year, minor. Uh, and minor is a relative term when we speak uh, in a municipal corporation sense. If we have a, 
a multi-million dollar budget, if it's a couple hundred thousand dollars, I would categorize that as minor. I, I understand that that's a, a major expense at, on an individual level, but this is a municipal corporation. So um, we're going to be going through this material. I, I appreciate your patience. Uh, I appreciate your understanding that again, this is a jumping off point. We're going to do better next year, but in the interest of time, that's why we're here today. Last thing I want to mention, um, I will be coming back to the council on the topic of, uh, I'm going to use the term incorrectly, the budget committee. Uh, I think that's the official term for it. I'm a little confused as to who exactly is on the budget, budget committee. Um, I did not have the opportunity to review the material today with the budget committee. I do intend to review the proposed fiscal year 24-25 budget with them as part of the process, but I did not do that for this effort today. I just did not have the time. And I need some clarification from council as to who and why these people are, are in this assignment. So I will be coming back with that. So enough of me talking, uh, Mr. Assistant City Manager, are you prepared for the presentation? Could I make, um, through the mayor, could I make one comment? Um, thank you. Uh, um, I want to appreciate uh, your candidness with the timeline and say that I completely understand it. And given the option, given that we are backed up against deadlines, I would rather have this as it is than not have it at all. And I understand that, you know, we can't just kick it down the road because it impacts next year. Um, and also, I know that, you know, you're new, you're new in the position. So that is also required, you know, a sort of ramp up period. Um, so I just want to say that while this seems crunched, I am fine with that because I understand the circumstances. Um, and it is an overview and there are no actions going to be taken. I don't think maybe or we are approve it. I don't know. But anyway, if there are, I'm fine with it anyway. I've reviewed the material. I've had the opportunity to, to review it. And um, I appreciate that uh, we are here to do this today. Through the mayor, thank yes. you. Yes, and I would like to echo Council Member Rule's comments. Thank you, Council Member Rule. And uh, thank you, I appreciate what you've done, Mr. City Manager. We understand this is a jumping off point. So let's jump off. Mr. Almeida. Thank you very much. Um, so I'll be working off uh, PowerPoint as we go through our mid-year budget process. And um, if there's questions along the way, please feel free to let me know. Um, if we could advance the slide. So to echo on the comments the city manager just made, um, typically there's there's two budget processes with, with the council um, where we're asking for decisions. So as you are aware, um, the first that you're used to would be the annual budget process. So the city of Ojai operates on a one-year fiscal year budget with that fiscal year being July 1st through June 30th. Um, that's adopted by resolution. As I'm sure you're familiar, that usually is months of lead time and work and quite a process to put together. So at the midway point, which is December 31st, um, a best practice is to do a mid-year budget review process. Um, that's a common occurrence in, in most municipalities. And it does a number of things. It, it provides a little more transparency about the process, actions that council has taken throughout the year, recommendations that staff is making to modify the adopted budget. And it also gives both the council and public a better understanding of trends in both revenues and expenditures in the general fund and special funds as well. Um, and it also sets us up to be in a better place and coming from a better understanding once we launch into the annual budget process. Um, with respect to council member rules question about actions to be taken, they're actually gonna fall in two categories. So we're gonna look at actions that the council has already ratified through the various meetings when we come to you and ask you to fund either new projects, programs, capital expenses, um, those are gonna be tracked of all the actions that were taken at prior council meetings to approve them. So this will just memorialize them in the revised budget document. And then the second part is there's gonna be a smaller subset of ask that are coming from city staff for new programs and projects. And you'll see there will be revenue um, adjustments to support those. So at the end, 
it's going to be neutral. But the two actions we're going to take are ratifying what's really already been done at prior meetings. And then there will be some staff uh, requests and recommendations as well that it will be new to. If we could advance the slide. So when we go through the mid-year budget evaluation process, staff, when we're looking at the budget document itself and where we're at, we're looking at year-to-date actuals through December 31st. Um, one of the things that we're looking at is what um, I refer to as the five R's and better understanding what those are. Um, so we have reoccurring revenues. So those are things um, that you might be familiar with. It's property tax, sales tax, um, here the transmit occupancy tax, um, things that we expect to get receipted uh, monthly. Um, also, we want to understand our non-reoccurring revenue sources. These might be one-time funding items that come. They might be grants. They might be reimbursements from either state or the county, um, but we want to understand those and how those might impact our fiscal outlook. Um, they need to be understood because if we're possibly at 70% of revenue item, but there was a large one-time occurrence, that needs to be weighted out. Um, on the expenditure side, we want to look at the reoccurring expenditures and see how we're tracking. Are we on pace um, to where we should be at the close of the fiscal year? Um, and that comes in two forms. Are we potentially going to exceed budget and do we need to make an adjustment? Or are we way under budget and maybe something's not occurring that should be, if we could ask those questions. We also want to look at non-reoccurring expenditures, those one-time things that it could be a project that the council has done and how that's tracking. And then also, this is more of the, the budget item. We like to see where we're at on general fund reserves. That'll be a conversation for the budget. Um, right now, what's coming to council is um, is basically neutral, so it won't have impact on reserves. Um, with the reserve level, we'll talk about it a little later, but we're at a good point. The council's goal is a 50% reserve. We're there. We have a $14.9 million general fund budget, um, and we're at over $7 million, so we're at the 50% level. Um, with respect to mid-year, the, I guess, six R I like to throw out there is when we discuss this is what's realistic, keeping in mind that really we have just four months of the fiscal year left. So when we talk about new add-on either programs or projects, it would need to be something that realistically could be done before June 30th. So everything that we bring to you are things that as a staff and being a small staff, we believe can be realistically done before the close of the fiscal year. All right, we can advance the slide. So I'm also new to OHI, um, but in consulting with Pam, our finance director, when the council developed the current adopted budget for the current 2023-24 fiscal year, uh, the staff at that time and council had conversation about what were some of the priorities to be reflected in this budget document. Um, there were four key ones that the city council had identified. Um, continuing to build upon reserves, hang down the unfunded pension liability, uh, city staffing, so getting up to uh, a full staffing model, and then catching up on deferred maintenance. Um, so I wanna touch on each of those four key points um, that I understand were important in the council's development of the annual budget and where we are at the mid-year point. If we could advance the slide. So as I mentioned, um, the city of Ojai has reached that 50% threshold of a general fund reserve. Um, and this is something that really is key to a city's financial health, um, especially one that is largely um, TOT oriented that has a, can waver a little more with the economic cycle. Um, but a 50% is a good cushion to have for a number of reasons. If there were an economic downturn, you can sustain yourself um, for quite some time. And in the event, if there were a large scale emergency or disaster, we'd be able to fund that. Um, usually, FEMA will make a declaration, we'll get reimbursed your costs, but usually that has a long 
time before that transpires. So typically the city's having to fund that disaster response and wouldn't expect reimbursement for maybe up to a year later um, after all the paperwork's done. Um, so a reserve in theory, a general fund reserve means if we have 50%, we're looking at the revenue side, which is there's arguments, should you compare it against revenues or expenditures? I always think revenues is the best practice because expenditures can be um, adjusted, but revenues are kind of your static point. So we're looking at a 50% reserve based upon the general fund revenues, which are 14.9 million less some transfers in from other funds. So we are there and which is a good place to be. So if the city were not to receive another dollar in any general fund revenues, we could sustain our operations for six months. If we could advance the slide. Um, a priority that the council had discussed was paying down the unfunded pension liabilities. Um, it's important to note that this is not something that's unique to Ohio. Every agency, if it's a special district municipality that participates in CalPERS, which is the retirement pension system for public employees, has an unfunded liability um, to varying degrees. Ours is not out of line, um, but it is something that you do want to keep an eye on. Um, the city has made contributions this fiscal year, um, so we're projected to make a contribution of about over half a million dollars um, to keep that liability in line. Um, and really, this is when we say liability, that's if we were to leave PERS tomorrow, what we would owe them for the obligation of our employees. Um, so it will always be there. It's something that won't go away, but we have no intent of leaving the CalPERS system. Um, so really, it's not a debt that's coming due at some certain date. Employees will continue to pay into it for their share. Um, and actually, this trend will get better over time. Uh, in 2013, um, the state passed what was called PEPRA, which limited the benefits for retirees and mandated that employees pay more into the system to offset the cost of the municipality. And over time, more of the workforce is becoming what's called PEPRA members that are newer into the system. So the city has a lesser obligation. So um, the classic members like myself are few and far between um, these days. So that has made a pretty significant impact. And I believe Pam's with us and knows the ins and outs of this. If there's anything I missed, Pam. Sounds good, Carl. All right. All right if we could advance the slide. So another priority that the council discussed when developing the current fiscal year budget was to fill some critical vacancies on the city staff and return to more normal staffing levels. Um, there had been some key positions that were unfilled um, and there was also some transition on staff. So some things that we have done this fiscal year um, that I would like to note is the council is very well aware um, the council engaged Ralph Anderson to do an executive search for the position of city manager um, and was quite successful in securing a very seasoned city manager that I'm probably the most happy to have on staff. Um, so that was that was a big win in a key position. Um, we do plan to continue to engage uh, professional search firms for department head positions, which we'll see later. Um, as you've seen, when we bring the salary resolution back to you, which we've probably done about three times, we're adding new classifications to that salary schedule. Doesn't mean that we're filling multiple positions, but what we're doing is we're broadening our classification structure to provide more opportunities to hire good people. Um, so if we have traditionally what has been one employee in a certain classification, um, Weston being the last one that we acted on, we added chief deputy city clerk and deputy city clerk. So in the future, if we needed to recruit for that position, we could get someone that's an up and comer, maybe with just a couple of years experience, or we could get someone that's far more seasoned. So it gives us more breadth to advertise at both levels and we could fill at one or the other. 
Thank you. And just an important point that I think you touched on is really a two-part process. So you not only need to have the classification, but you need to have the funding. So you can always tell people that just because you're modifying the salary schedule does not necessarily mean that you're actually bringing that person on, that that's part of the budget process. And that is a very important responsibility of the council to decide you know, what, what you can fund and what you cannot fund. And, and the approach that this city has had, which we're going to continue, is we're trying to keep headcount static. You know, where where necessary. So, for example, you brought on a, a homeless, excuse me, unhoused services uh, coordinator. That was seen as a priority, so we, we added to the headcount. But we're going to normally try to do what has been the practice here, which is ask people to wear multiple hats. And that's how you run a small city. Thank you. And then finally, and this aligns, it has been a priority of, of our new city manager is investing in the staff that we do have in professional development opportunities. Um, so we've used the budget that has been available and we are going to be asking for a little more funding. Um, so across departments that staff can attend professional conferences um, and get professional development opportunities to A, um, network to get to know others in the profession to bounce ideas off of and get uh, first-hand exposure to what are the best practices, what are the new and upcoming trends uh, to resolve the issues that they face in their job every day. Um, we have had a number of staff participate in conferences. Uh, two members of the finance team this last week went to the California Municipal Finance Officers Conference, um, and they were very excited. The only frustration they had were so many of the sessions were so good, they couldn't pick which ones to go to. Um, so all wins across the, the staffing um, priority, if we could advance the slide. So the fourth and final um, priority that the council discussed was catching up on deferred maintenance. As you know, um, it was somewhat unique in Ojai that the pandemic um, really hit the city's TOT revenues. And the, the city deferred doing a lot of projects for a couple of years. Um, so now we're, we're catching up. Um, Wendy has a very full workload in public works, a very ambitious one for a city our size of doing what they're doing. I'm pretty impressed what they're, they're doing and able to do. Um, but as you know, um, street resurfacing and the road infrastructure has been a top priority in something that they've been getting done in quite a meaningful way. Um, the passage of Major C has greatly bolstered our ability to do this. Um, and as you'll see in upcoming meetings, um, this is a program that will will continue on. So wash, rinse, and repeat, that we'll be resurfacing roads every year. Um, so we'll be going out to bid to do the plans, specs, and engineering for next year's project and, and be underway. So Lindy's got the model in place and her team in public works has been executing wonderfully. All right, if we could advance the slide. Um, so one of the, the key things here, and this is going back to what we just talked about, um, is really the dip in revenues that the city experienced during the pandemic was, was quite notable. Um, so some of those items were put on hold. Um, in the more recent years, revenues are are holding flat, which is anticipated. Most your revenue sources, um, such as property tax, are usually quite stable ones that, that grow a small um, percentage basis every year. Same with sales tax. Um, the new one on here is is the cannabis tax, which is quite small, but you can see it is a new uh, source of revenue as well um pam is there anything else that is notable on this slide i think um the major um <clears throat> concept i would like to instill council is that it we are trending flat with the looming aspect of a potential uh, recession so not that it's gonna you know, dive off the cliff, but the the sources, uh, the revenue sources, if, as you can see on this graph, it's not trending upward. Um, it's still a little bit more than in prior year, but it's still not increasing as we've seen in prior years. 
All right, if we could advance the slide. Um, Council Member Wolf, thank you, you're the mayor. Um, so I, I'm, I can't distinguish, although I can deduce on, on this. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. If we yeah. could go back. Jim, yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm assuming that the, I see from, to my eyes, both property tax and franchise fees look red. And I'm assuming that it is the top red that is the property yeah, tax. Yeah, so the top red, basically okay. the second bar yes, down the is only property way it tax. It makes sense, but I just wanted to clarify. And then franchise fees. Uh, flat and, it, you know, yeah, yeah. makes sense. So okay. those are pass-through fees that we get from um, possibly like telecommunications companies yeah. that are paying a percentage of their gross receipts to the city. Yeah, and the reason that that I that it's a, it has any value to me at all is that I was wondering, you know, given that so many, uh, not so many, but our houses have been turning over and, you know, the property taxes, if it goes, you know, from when it was bought 30 years ago mm -hmm. for 100,000 to property taxes, that is now a million, um, we might see an uptick, but I guess we haven't uh, sold enough houses to see a, a real big uptick. So that, that was the reason for the question. Thank you. Yeah, and that's correct. Is is property sell and the valuations reset, um, there, there's somewhat, arise but keep in mind we get a very small it's basically um one percent back from the, the state gets the lion's share of it i, I actually did not know that so expire huh? okay all right if we could advance the slide um so this is really one of the key metrics to look at um when you're looking at general fund revenues versus expenditures um and looking at historical trends so the blue bars that you're looking at are where the city's revenues for the entirety of the general fund come in. And then the overlaid orange bar is where the general fund expenditures have fallen. So if you can see, um, especially during those COVID years when uh, projects were pulled back on, revenues sharply outpaced expenditures. What I would very important to note on this and any municipalities charts going to look like this the most recent years it looks as revenues and expenditures are even which is correct because we're adopting a balanced budget but keep in mind that those years are not yet closed and have not been audited what pretty much always happens is revenues usually always come in above where anticipated and expenditures are known so they stay where they are. So if we were to go back in two years and look at this chart again, those last two blue bars would likely be higher than the orange line once the books for that year have been closed and the revenues are known, if that makes sense. So that trend of revenues outpacing expenditures is likely to continue, but usually when you, when you adopt a balanced budget, it, it appears it appears that way as it should. All right. Me, through the mayor. Um, a quick question. Um, what is the general turnaround time for an audit? So we have not yet been audited, and I'm assuming this is fiscal year 22 to 23. Um, what's the general turnaround for an audit? All that, a, a, a verification but, of an audit. Well, I'll let Pam respond to that, but before, okay. um, with external audits usually you bring on it's the best practice that we do you'll bring on an auditor for a set amount of time uh -huh. you'll understand why i'm explaining this so typically it's a three-year engagement okay and it's a best practice obviously you want to rotate auditors and there's a whole host of reasons you want to do that but when you rotate auditors the audit for that year is a much more onerous process bringing on someone that's totally unfamiliar with your practices your revenues your expenditures yeah. so in that off year when you're starting with a new one uh -huh. it's a much more longer timeline than what it normally would be and then with that pam if you want to respond the normal timeline is six months um however we uh, our current auditor has been working with us due to the turnover in finance um we haven't had enough staffing to as as well as their staff they're also um um looking for staff as well so both the, us and the auditors are trying to coordinate good timing and getting good numbers 
making sure that we um, complete our process as well. That's yeah, thank you very much. That makes perfect sense. If I may also, um, if this hasn't happened in the past, council uh, can be and usually is involved in the audit process because the auditor will reach out, they'll, they'll select a random member to respond to questions. Are you are you aware of any fraudulent activity or any practices? That And that's very normal and we would encourage candor and honesty, obviously, in that that's part of the normal deal. Thank you. All right, if we could advance the slide. Okay, so now we're gonna do a, an overview of just where we are at the mid-year point, um, looking at revenues and expenditures. And we're gonna do that for both the general fund. And then we're gonna look at a select number of, of the special funds where we're gonna make some changes. Uh, so just at the broadest level, um, the city's budget and how we operate we have what's known as the general fund. So these are monies that come into the city, property tax, um, sales tax being good examples, um, also the other ones listed on there. And they can be used for any governmental purpose as authorized by the city council. Um, so these are monies that come into the city um, when we talk about our general fund budget. Um, they can be allocated for any governmental purpose by the council. Uh, when we look at special funds, th those are a bit different. Um, those are coming from special sources. So a one might be Measure C, where it was passed by the voters, and it had a specific purpose um, that it was placed there for. Um, other ones might be revenues that we get, such as the gas tax from the state um, that can only be used on road infrastructure. So those are your special funds. Um, other you may have an enterprise fund if you're operating a special thing, but that's why we distinguish. Um, so when we talk about the city of Ojai's budget, usually we'll talk about the size of the overall budget and the general fund budget. So the general fund is that $14.9 million budget, and that's what we measure our reserve against. Um, so when we talk about general fund, monies coming into the city can be used for any governmental purpose. Um, these six are the ones that we're looking for because these six alone account for over 80% of the city's general fund budget. And really the top three property tax, sales tax, and TOT are really the drivers. Um, so understanding where those are at is a good indicator of where we're going to end up the year. Um, as you can see, uh, overall, we're in a good place. So actually 43% is a good number because a lot of these will lag. Um, so this is at where we're at as of December 31st. And typically you'll get receipts going into next fiscal year that will be allocated back to the current year. Um, so there should be no alarm if you're under 50% on any of these revenue sources. And as you can see, there's somewhere over 50%. So it would be reasonable to expect those to come well above where the budget number is pegged. Um, on the opening page of the staff report, when we talk about general fund revenues, there is a typo in the numbers. There was a subset of numbers used um, there. So the 2.984975 should be 6,100,063. Nine hundred and fifty, and then the corresponding percentage should be forty one point four. Um, but what we're looking at here is correct. So these are our, our general fund revenues. And then, if we could advance the slide, so these are other um, revenue sources. Obviously, they don't have as great of an impact on the general fund, but just looking at where we're coming in at. Um, one one good reason I do like to look at these and have the council be aware of these, not that they're so impactful on the overall city's fiscal position, but it is interesting to see because these do tell a story um, about what's going on in the city in terms of development, what's going on in the city in terms of interest in recreation programming. Um, so you can see some trends even in these smaller revenue categories. Um, 
of how the city's doing in other categories of interest as well. But everything here is is on pace and certainly on par. We could advance the slide. Okay, so we just went through uh, the general fund revenues. And part of this mid-year process is, as I mentioned, is looking at making adjustments. Um, so again, all good news. Um, we have before you four revenue categories that we feel are easily ones that can be taken up to modify the budget of what we expect to receive. So property tax, sales tax, TOT, and then business license fees are all ones that we anticipate to come in well above what was budgeted. Um, cannabis licensing has dropped, so we're actually recommending revenue decrease in that category of $5,200. But the net of these five adjustments from general fund revenue would bring would put us at an extra $310,400 for the current fiscal year. So that is one of the adjustments that we'll be asking the council to make is to change the budget on these um, five revenue items. If you could advance the slide. Now, this annual budget cycle, the council adopted a $400,000 general fund contingency. So the council allocated $400,000 to sit effectively within the general fund to be used for various projects, programs that might come up. Um, the city manager could speak to that, but going forward, we'd probably just have the money in the general fund reserve and not do this. It, yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Elmer. It, it is an unusual practice, um, you know, that as has been alluded to that city, the city council controls what's in the general fund and it is there and available for the city council to direct for general governmental purposes. It is odd to uh, have an additional subset within there. It's totally unnecessary. So I would just recommend that we don't do that any further. You have the general fund and reserves at your discretion. You have a reserve policy that helps guide you how you might use that. You don't need to set aside an additional Four hundred thousand dollars. It it really is unnecessary. Thank you. So that's the the key number. So, what the council has available at the mid year, based upon a the revenue adjustments that staff's proposing, and b the adopted general fund contingency. There's sorry, and there is. I just want to have one more follow up, and and all the more reason that we're going to be doing the, the mid year budget cycle as an ongoing thing because that is your opportunity to make the tune ups. I think perhaps maybe, and I'm just looking at the crystal ball here. Maybe that was done years before, in lieu of doing some type of mid year update. I don't really know, but we're going to be doing this going forward, and so that's always going to be your your marker to to make tweaks and changes as you need to. Sorry, thank you. If I could also add to the mayor, the contingency fund also reflected the prior city manager, Mr. Vega, put that in place given the extreme uncertainty on revenues we had when COVID hit. And we had that sort of who knows what the world was going to be, period. We're thankfully out of that, although the future is always uncertain, but that's a part of the function of it. And this media process lets us get that early look in a more certain environment. So that's the number. Um, the, the magic number of what the council has available to allocate is seven hundred ten thousand four hundred dollars. Um, but we have a number of proposals or actions the council's taken that will account for most of that. Um, if we could advance the slide, um, so th there's a lot going on here. This is previously directed city council general fund expenditures. These are things that have been authorized at city council meetings, but before we dive into it, I would, I just want to step back and explain how some of this works because it might look a little confusing up there. So within the city's general fund budget document, how it's organized is we have departments. So the departments on the left, um, finance, city manager, public works, city attorneys, those are the departments. Um, 
within those departments, there are specific programs. And then within those programs, there are line items. The city has a line item budget. It's an accounting function um, that within the city manager's department, just to pick one, there might be a professional development line item as there would be in the city clerks. So when we look at that very middle column, that's what exists as the council adopted the budget in that current line item. So some already have allocations. Um, some may not have allocations. Um, so we're looking at more of the line item level here. So that's why it might get a little confusing. Um, so that middle column is what existed in the adopted budget. The directed adjustments are what was approved by council. And then the final column would be that new proposed budget for that line item. So these are items that have come up previously. Um, I can go through those here. So the top one, contract services. This was to hire an outside accountant to catch the city up on bank re reconciliations that came to the council um, in the amount of $40,000. Um, the next is the homeless or unhoused services coordinator. Um, this was part of the goal setting meeting where we allocated $200,000 to address um, the encampment. And that's actually split here between that coordinator position and then lower if you see non-departmental unhoused support. That's the balance of the 200,000, 140 you see there. Um, contract services, interim city manager, manager placement. The council had authorized $12,000 to engage Baker Tilly um, to find and place uh, Mark Scott. Uh, Part-time salaries, that was for the interim city manager um, that, that was placed. Um, housing reimbursement is part of the um, contract that the council approved for the new permanent city manager. Um, so that reimbursement um, the latter part of in June would go into the next fiscal year. So that's why it might be a little less than you might anticipate. Uh, city manager recruitment. So this was the recruitment for the permanent city manager when we used Ralph Anderson and Associates, which was approved by council. Um, as I already discussed, the 140 was the balance of that 200,000 coming out of the goals meeting. Um, public works, there was an additional allocation for the Clough Vista Park Maintenance Improvements, 7,200. Um, there was an additional $100,000 appropriation towards litigation support. Um, so this was for some ongoing litigation and also to bring on uh, uh, Alishan Winder, uh, which was Sonny's firm and Matt. I don't know if there might be any other parts of that. The other, so it's some uh, lawsuits handled in my office, uh, Alishan Winder is Sonny Sotani's firm. And then also some additional allocation for the water law lawsuit, um, Holly Jacobson and Barkovitz Chronic and Shanahan firm. Thank you. And then finally, a whopping thousand dollars to increase the chamber decor budget. I think that there were some uh, items that were vandalized that had to be replaced and some signs that were purchased to please not vandalize the, the property anymore. <laughs> So those are items that have already come to the city council. The city council has already acted on these to authorize them. So at this mid-year point, we want to memorialize those by adopting um, the budget for the current fiscal year. So the net total of these items is $480,700. And then myself, Pam, or Melinda could answer if there's any questions on any of these items. Hopefully everything's pretty familiar. That's great. Thank you. All right. So obviously that's less than the $710,000 that you guys have left to allocate, but staff has some ideas and those are what's coming next. If we could advance the slide. Um, so now these are all items that have not come to the city council but our suggestions coming, these are all coming from city staff of either um, allocations to make to adjust certain line items where it might be necessary, or some of these are new 
projects that the city would like to take up. Um, so I can walk through some of these. Some of these are, are just minor adjustments needing to be made um, to bring us in line to where we expect the expenditures to be. Um, the first is city council meeting supplies. And again, same, same thought process. We're looking at the line item level. So that first column is what exists in that line item now. The second column, the adjustments is what staff's asking to add to that base. And then the final is if approved by the council, what that new line item account balance would be. So same, same approach. So first in the city council department, is council meeting supplies. We're asking for an additional $3,500. Um, the next set are all within the city manager department. Um, so contract services, this is one of those items. This is a new ask. Um, there's interest in, I know uh, there's been some conversations about engaging an outside communications consultant um, that would be able to bolster our efforts of the PIO. So this would be doing some things like a community-wide newsletter on a recurring basis, possibly quarterly, um, helping us do some things that we have a standard look. Um, for example, this, this PowerPoint, I sure would have liked to have a standard PowerPoint we use for all commissions and council meetings uh, that has a little nicer look. Um, and then also bolstering our outreach efforts, if that might be on social media, and then some best practices of better ways that we can really use our website, which should be the backbone of our communications efforts. I'd love to get us to a place that we have all our project information out there and out in the field in real time. We can have QR codes. Someone take a picture on their phone. We'll take them right back to the website and explain what they're looking at and what's going on out there. Um, but there's a lot of opportunities to get information out to the public on the business of the city. And for what I think is a, a small spin, this would be a new ask right here for the communications consultant. Um, the third, this is one that the new city manager, I believe had raised at the last council meeting when we brought the salary resolution, but this is doing a, um, a compensation study of looking at first identifying what our comparator agencies are across different classifications. And that may not always be municipalities, that might be special districts as well. And doing a really an in-depth comp compensation study to understand where we are at relative to them. And that's the best way to inform any salary increases that you're looking to make. Um, once you have a good uh, comp and class study in hand, you can better understand where you're not as competitive in prior years, I've seen that the city has given basically across the board um, base salary increases, but this you can maybe in a more targeted fashion understand that this certain classification group is much further behind than others and may warrant a little heftier um, salary increase to better retain and attract people. And if I might, you might have classifications that are above market that would be Y rated and where there's no increase merited because they're above what you're seeing up there. So it, it cuts both ways, but it, it's really a best practice. And, and the devil in the details is really identifying what those comparator agencies are so that you can try to keep those static. And the comparator agencies are people that you lose or gain employees from. And so it's not a situation where you're looking to say like, well, we're the same as the sanitation district or we're the same as the county of Ventura. No, where, who are you competing against for employees? That's really what it is because Classifications, small city to big city are often static. If you're a police officer, the job duties are very similar. Uh, the scene might not be the same, but the job duties are the same in one agency as they are small to big. Thank you. Wide rated, thank you. Uh, <laughs> it's a term that is used if, if you're uh, gonna be frozen uh, because your classification has been found to be above market and you're frozen until the time that uh, you are no longer above market. So that doesn't make employees happy often, but you have the data to show them that, I'm sorry, you're making above all the comparator agencies. And so that for that reason, we can't recommend an increase for you at this time. Um, the other important thing I think to point out, it's always best to use total compensation 
when you do this and not just salary, because the entire picture is not only what you get in salary, but what the value of those benefits that the city has provided to you. So more on more on this later, and this will be coming to you as part of the uh, budget process. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, so next, we're still within the city manager department. So the fourth item down, executive search. Um, so currently, we don't have an allocation there. We're asking for thirty thousand, and this would be to engage an executive search firm um, for the position of director of public works. Um, so as you know, we have a fantastic director of public works with Lindy, but Lindy, as a retired president, it. Um, can only be with us for a limited number of hours. The other challenge is with retired annuitants. Um, you have to have not just an open recruitment, but a meaningful recruitment. Um, so PERS will challenge you if you basically have had it kind of posted on the city website, but there's really been no engagement or interest. Um, so that's why we want to shift to showing that we are making a, a meaningful effort to get a new director of public works. Um, this would be a process we're going to go out, will be a longer one. So um, Lindy will be with us um, for a duration of time and be able to plan the, the next street project for the coming year. And is working with the city manager on ways that she might be able to stay on and support us in a uh, consulting role as well. So that's what the executive search is. Uh, um, Pre-employment physicals, so when we bring on new um, employees, part of the onboarding process is that we get a pre-employment physical. Obviously, we have a lot of new staff, so we've done a lot of pre-employment physicals, so we're asking to increase that budget um, by $1,200. Uh, miscellaneous expenses, um, city manager's department, these are just miscellaneous kind of office supply type things that have come up, I'm just asking another 1000 there. Um, now we're moving into the finance department. So that first item that we're looking at is contract services, um, bringing on a, a consultant. Uh, so we had talked about this, but this is to bring on a consultant to have a holistic approach at our processes within our finance department. So looking at our staffing and our responsibilities and how those are, are segregated. And then looking at the day-to-day -day core accounting processes and how they're done, everything from how bank recs are done, how journal entries are done, how the payroll process is done. Um, in my short time with the city, um, I see that our finance department has great employees that are motivated, but they're using a lot of very antiquated processes that are just not efficient. Um, and fortunately, our city manager has, has gone through this before um, and has some great recommendations. Uh, yeah, uh, I think the important part is what um, Sir Alameda hit on, which is we have a very uh, dedicated uh, finance staff with the correct pedigree to do to the work, but we need to help them uh, with that. I've, I've used um, some firms in the past who have been helpful to come in to you know suggest this, that, and the other, give you a report, and then more importantly, help you move to these better practices. So we're get, we'll end up with a better process and a happier team. Um, it, it does require a little bit of a spend to get there, but this has been extremely beneficial in my past experience. All right, so continuing on in the finance department, the next also contract services, um, we're looking at engaging um, uh, a vendor that the city already works with, which is HDL on specifically working on the cannabis compliance program. This is a tricky one. It's it's obviously an all cash business, um, but HDL does have some, some methods to make sure that the businesses, A, are paying the correct rate to the city, B, are in compliance with the state regulations that are set for, and then also they are able to do revenue collection for us. Um, so we don't really want to have, you know, members of the finance team going and collecting bundles of cash and taking them to the bank. Um, but they have methods that this, this can be paid. So it, it's a good spend to get us to a good place on getting compliant here. Um, finally, in the finance department, getting back to that professional development conversation we had, 
we had an adopted budget of 2000. We're asking for an additional 4,000, um, for professional development. And then Pam, was there anything you wanted to highlight with respect to finance? I do not. Thank you. All right. So next we'll be move into the city clerk department. Um, there's just one item here. Again, professional development. So there was an adopted budget. We're asking for a, a pretty sizable increase of $8,500. But what this is for is the uh, chief deputy city clerk is in the process of obtaining his CMC certification, which is a huge deal in this realm. And Weston, if you'd like to to share a little bit about this certification. Yeah, the CMC stands for Certified Municipal Clerk. It's a two-year process, and the professional development I have used in the last year has been priceless, uh, connecting with not only the 10 county clerks in Ventura County, but really getting access to every city clerk in the state in, in various ways. And as the CMC is the two-year process. There's also a master's in, in municipal clerk and MMC. Um, I intend to try and do both of those. Um, the most beneficial aspect I've seen is being the city's elections official um, in my responsibilities as the day-to-day, -day, uh, covering the day-to-day -day roles for the elected city clerk and just the importance of elections in the clerk's office and uh, being a great elections official for this legislative body and city. And we are so grateful to you, Mr. Chief Deputy City Clerk. Thank you so much. Yes, I'm yeah. proud of you. <laughs> Through the chair? Um, I just yes, to say, remember, you have your own department. Wow. Okay. <laughs> it's a department of one, and we are mighty. <laughs> and thank you, to, thank you to staff for the recommended adjustments. So it, it's a very good certification. Um, it has a, a mentorship component too. And you get a pair of a mentor buddy to help. And I'd also like to note in some larger agencies that that primary city clerk position, this certification is often a requirement um, to hold the position of city clerk. Um, so that's how significant it is. All right. So now we'll move on to planning. They have one item. So just looking to increase. Um, not surprisingly, office supplies. So we've had a lot of projects. They've done a whole lot of public notices um, there. Next, recreation, weight room improvements, um, a small adjustment of $2,500. I believe there was some um, water intrusion that they had to address on, on site there. The next three are in the public works department. Um, so the first is just equipment maintenance and repairs. Um, we're looking to double that with another $2,000 for a total of 4,000. The next is the more notable one. And what this actually is, is engaging the county of Ventura um, to take up this vehicle maintenance item for us. And our city manager, Wendy, could better speak to this than I. So thank you. This is uh, for the remainder of this fiscal year in order to address some, uh, we have some some vehicles that are inoperable because of long-standing maintenance issues. So they're not able to be a part of the fleet. We're unable to address them with our staff on hand. And I would just would point out that coming into the next budget year process, Ms. Palmer and I will be talking to you about a shift in how we address vehicle maintenance and really looking more at a contract model just because it's very difficult for a small city of our size to be able to handle all that. And we think of a larger agency or organization would probably be a better match and we could turn vehicles around more quickly and make sure that the fleet is fully operational and functional. Thank you. Um, does any of that include uh, the electrification of our fleet? Uh, I know that is a policy decision that we that was made in the previous council. Uh, thank you. Uh, th through the chair, um, this is just maintenance of, of existing vehicles. So with with the recent vehicle that we brought on, it obviously doesn't at this time need any maintenance. But to your point, yes, as we bring on more and more vehicles, if we go to a larger organization or agency that has that expertise, that's very helpful to us because that eliminates our need to train somebody in how to maintain an electric vehicle because it is different than internal combustion, as you well know. So 
Thank you. Ms. Palmer, did I miss anything there? Just like to add one thing. Good morning, by the way. Not good evening, so that's cool. Um, so one one thing that we have been challenged with too is is taking possession of EVs, and so as we have this long lead time, our fleet continues to age. So and fail at the same time. So we are in the process of replacing. We were just we just took receipt of our first electric vehicle like two weeks ago. We are on on deck to receive another one. We're, we'll be ordering it in the next month or so taking an item to council for that actually no because we received um approval last year but again we won't take receipt of it till probably midsummer so so as we're waiting for these electric vehicles our fleet continues to age and fail so as the city manager said we need additional help keeping those up and running until we can replace the vehicles fantastic thank you very much um, so moving on, the final item in public works is some needed maintenance to the police building. So they're asking for an additional $3,500 there. And then last but not least, um, looking at the equipment replacement fund that the city runs. Um, this is an IT item looking to implement Microsoft 365 across. So this would be a citywide item. Um, there's some efficiencies to be had there for certain. And, uh, City manager can speak to that. Certainly, uh, we we have a small and mighty IT department, and they've uh, devised a lot of very ingenious um, approaches and solutions to rolling out enterprise wide how we have our um, IT offerings here. A lot of them tend to be web based, but um, we're a municipal corporation. We need you know a standard client based um, solution where we don't have folks that when they're you know working in the evening from their home. That are encountering issues that you find when you're trying to log in via you know web solution so this is it's expensive and these licenses are costly but this is going to save staff time and it department time as we resolve all these and i'm speaking a lot from personal experience when i'm home at night trying to do something i often can't because we don't have the right tool so this will give us the right tool i want to look towards more standardization and normalization in the office products because that's you know if we're, if we're trying to deliver more information to the public we need the best tools to do that thank you all right so that brings us to the conclusion so the totality of these new general fund expenditures request again coming from staff two hundred twenty five thousand three hundred dollars um, and if we could if there's no questions we could advance the slide so hold it holistically looking on the expenditure side for the general fund. So top line, we have an additional allocation by adjusting revenues, $710,400. We're gonna back out previous council directed allocations, $480,700. Um, the new request, if authorized, that staff has recommended is $225,300. So making the general fund allocations in total on the expenditure side, $700,006, leaving a net of $4,400, which staff would recommend would simply be returned to the general fund reserve. And that would conclude our presentation on the general fund, if there's any questions. Questions from council, Councilman Lane? Um, I have uh, just a, a couple of questions. Um, one, uh, have we looked at all at how the state uh, budget deficit is going to affect us and our revenue, our tax revenues? And I know that there's still, like, there are still policy decisions being decided about how to make up for that deficit, but I didn't know if there was any consideration uh, about that. Yeah, so if we go back, um, not that we need to go back, I'm sorry, on the PowerPoint, I shouldn't say that. Um, we're good where we are. Really, those remember those top three lines are really the driver for the city of Ohio. So property tax, that's going to be unaffected. That's going to stay static. And then the other two are, are really local to Ohio's economy, the TOT and sales tax. Um, so really what's going on at the state level is not really going to impact those three main revenue drivers. But oh. if I could add through the mayor, 
areas where we may see an effect is grants. Of mm -hmm. course, I hear Mr. Uh, Chuck will see out um, grants. This when the state has a sixty something billion dollar budget deficit, they stop giving out grants, so that might dry up grant sources. The state also often tries to claw back money that has been given but not yet spent. Um, we're not currently, I'm not aware of significant amounts of money that we've received but haven't spent yet. Some agencies are in that position and you have to try to lock it up now. Um, the other one we're monitoring is the California Business Roundtable Initiative that has qualified for the November 2024 ballot that would severely restrict the city's ability to raise new taxes and to impose fees and costs and things that aren't taxes. That ballot measure is being reviewed by the state Supreme Court for validity whether it can or cannot be on the ballot. We're expecting a ruling by the end of this month or early March. Um, if that does survive to the ballot, then that will be something that my folks will want to take a look at and we'll be assessing what that might mean for future revenue sources, particularly as we look at uh, adjusting our fee schedules and adjusting our regulatory sort of permit costs and so forth. That's going to limit that ability for future revenue and we'll have to be assessed. Through the mayor, just a housekeeping matter. I know that it's almost 1115. You know, we still have another portion of the presentation we'd like to go through. Um, I might suggest that, you know, you, you consider that we might want to continue this meeting. Um, we could we could do that um, to, to not only finish the presentation, um, but also to allow for, you know, the expected you know, public participation comment and perhaps the participation of your two other members. If you want to continue, we can try to hurry up and make it through, but I think we have a couple of hard stops with a couple of you where you have obligations. So just throwing that out there for your consideration. Thank you. Council members, uh, do you have any input? So I do have a hard stop. I pushed my I pushed my meeting back. Uh, so I have a hard stop at 1145. You need to walk out of here at 1145. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, I have the roughly the same the same hard stop um i'm wondering um have we gotten through the part that we would be ostensibly voting to approve i'm going to cover the special funds next it will be much quicker okay but there are some allocations in there okay i mean i would like to um i would like to complete this if possible so maybe if we we, you know, yeah, kind of move more quickly. We've gone through the details and your, your explanations have been great. And that's, I think, why we don't have that many questions. Um, so, but uh, yeah, that would be great. I, I, my, my preference would be, as I said, to vote this and, and move on just simply because we have so much on our plate. So thank you. And yeah, I'm good to 1150. Okay. Okay. 1150. I'm good for all day. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. So if we can go to, back to the PowerPoint, I'll, I'll move a little more expedient to get through the special things. If we could advance the slide. Um, so as I had mentioned earlier, special fund revenues, they are effectively typically funds coming from the state. So as I mentioned earlier, this might be um, gas tax that we receive from the state. It might be grant sources of funding, um, but these are revenues received by the city that have some restriction tied to them. So different than the general fund, they have a more limited scope. So they have a limited scope of use and then they would have to be appropriated by the council um, to be expended. So that's why they're a little bit different. They're in a different account and each would have their own account balance or reserve, basically. Um, one thing I would like to point out is you're, is you're going through the uh, staff report. Special funds are a little different. Looking at percentages to date and mid-year is not really a good way to um, think about where we're at. Oftentimes, these are reimbursable items. So you usually don't see the funding coming in until the latter part of the fiscal year or even after the close of the fiscal year. So it's not uncommon to have a special fund that might have, you know, 6% of, of revenues to date as 1231. Um, so that shouldn't be alarming as you go through the document that a lot of these are, are lower in percentage. So just want to make that point. We could advance the slide. Um, 
So the next set of slides is really highlighting Measure C with the city recently passed um, that took place in 2020 and highlighting what it's allowed the city to do and offset a lot of general fund obligations that the city used to have. And this is in large part why the city has been in a better place financially and why the city has been able to achieve that reserve level of 50%. Um, so this measure passed has done a lot of solid infrastructure improvements. So the street maintenance budget that we've talked about, resurfacing roads, um, slow resealing roads, addressing parking lots, um, Measure C has been leaned on heavily to do this. Um, these are some of the other highlights of the things that we've been able to do as well. And if we could advance the slide. Um, so this is looking back to the inception of what has been collected and what has been spent. Um, so you can see um, this is going through the close of the current fiscal year. So this is from inception through June 30th, 2024, what we expect um, across those fiscal years, it's about $9.2 million that we would have collected um, Measure C. Had. So that's significant to a city of this size. It's almost one year's budget across five years. And we've spent about half that money to date. Um, Pam, is there anything else you'd like to note? I do not. Thank you. Okay, if we could advance the slide. Oh. Uh, through the mayor. Um, just curious why we haven't spent it. I mean, we have certainly have projects we could have spent yeah. it on. I'm just curious why, you know, 350,000 when we have a million seven. Just so, curious. well, there's a couple of answers to that. So one is keep in mind during the pandemic, um, the city pulled back on doing a lot of those capital projects. And then also with this size staff, there's limitation on doing these. These are large scale capital projects that are a lot of time and a lot of planning. Um, We've gotten more ambitious recently, so I'd expect to see just that street maintenance and resurfacing program carrying forward is really going to be bolstered what we can do. But there's it's just capacity at the staff level. If I could jump in really quickly, too. So uh, Ms. Palmer and I are, are looking at a new approach, and as we go to bringing on a, a dedicated um, uh, permanent director and having Ms. Palmer in a different capacity, what you're going to see with some of the proposed capital improvement projects in the next budget year is a component for each project for project management, because that's one of the big issues. Is And so we're, we're going to need the project to not only take care of the supplies and the materials, but also somebody overseeing it, then have our director or the CIP manager, and perhaps that is Ms. Palmer, really focused on that, managing the, the project managers, making sure these move forward. What it means to the city is that perhaps the projects get a little smaller in scope, but more importantly, they get finished. And so you actually see some tangible results. Right. Um, and, and so I just want to, I, I totally understand the explanation where you may have the money, but if you don't have the other resources that can implement, you know, that's just the way it is. So, so thank you for that explanation. So the current slide um, highlights some projects the city has been able to do utilizing C funds. Um, since the inception. Um, so uh, there's some facility improvements and maintenance improvements. Um, and then obviously the, the big one, the, the street improvements as well. We could advance the slide. So basically same look, previous slide, but just um, putting dollars to it and showing where that money has been allocated. Obviously the lion's share of this, about um, 4 million of the 5 million is going towards the street improvements as well. And then some of the infrastructure around streets, if it's the uh, storm system um, or the ancillary parking lots as well. We could advance the slide. Um, so on the special fund side, staff is only recommending one change on the revenues. Um, so we anticipate the measure C coming in higher than what we had adopted on the revenue side. So staff's proposing to modify um, the revenues for Measure C by a total of three hundred thousand dollars. Adrian, if we could advance the slide. Um, now we're looking at the expenditure side. And I'm sorry, this is this is so small, but this is out of the the staff report. But what this is, these are all 
special fund items that have come to council before. And these were the allocations that the council has already acted on. So again, we're just memorializing this in the mid-year budget document. Um, so the first set of four of these are all related to either this year or next year's street improvement project. So these are new allocations um, that needed to be made um, for the current year and then for next year on, on the planning of. Um, so that's the first set of four of those. Um, the fifth item on there is the trolley stop. As you remember, we allocated the very recently, I think it's the last meeting, the additional $60,000. Um, next is the speed survey. And then the last two are, as I'm sure you recall, are some uh, changes to allocate some funding towards uh, pickleball at Seoul Park. So Lindy and our city manager had the great idea, since this involves paving and resurfacing, to utilize Measure C. So that was <laughs> a really inventive thought. Um, there's some council direction provided too, yeah. so it's, it's it's authorized. And then the, the ancillary cost of the twelve thousand dollars just to do some of the, the netting or um, other lighting improvements that might be there. Right. So these are things that have already gone to council, all special fund related. If we could advance the slide. And then these are new um, requests at mid year. The staff is proposing. Um, so first is the purchase of a used trolley, and um, I believe Lindy and the city manager shared that the lead times on getting the new ones is so great, and we have one that's not functional now. Lindy has found one um, that will meet our needs now so we can support all our transit routes. Um, the next two are vehicle maintenance items, um, upping the budgets there. And then the final two, um, these are items that Lindy has suggested, and I, I think they're good ones. Um, given that we have a little more capacity in this year's street paving program to do a bit more, these are parking lots that have been problematic because of um, their degraded conditions and received some, some claims and some complaints. Um, but these are easy ones to do. They don't require the same level of planning and engineering as a, as a street would. So these are easy wins to get using Measure C um, with our current contract. Um, and Lindy could answer any questions on these as these are all public works related ones. But this concludes the presentation. Unless there's any questions on these items. Well, thank you. A big thank you to you, Mr. Assistant City Manager. We are really lucky to have you here in Ojai. And clearly this is your area of expertise and precision and you're so thorough, so thank you so much. Any um, questions from council? Uh, no, through the mayor, I, I have asked the questions as we've gone through, so thank you very much. Um, and I would also like to echo, thank you to uh, Mr. Alameda. This was um, great. It was easy, it was understandable um, and I feel informed. So thank you very much without being overwhelmed, which is, you know, could have been a possibility for sure. So thank you. Any no, question? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I also want to just echo, wow, this is really great work. It's so thorough. Uh, you've answered all the questions that I had in coming into this uh, through your presentation. Um, I had one other question. Um, uh, you know, I know that there is funding available through the infrastructure bill and most of it is being grant funding, but I was wondering if um, for, you know, for cities, available specifically for cities, is there have we pursued any of those, any of that kind of funding, or have we looked at at options for pursuing that funding? Ms. Palmer, are you prepared to answer that question? Okay. <laughs> so there's our answer. Well, uh, well, I do know within public works in the recreation department, um, Luis is leaving us. He's very active um, looking at facility and recreation and programming grants. Um, he's had some success there. He had the um, one with the Clippers. Unfortunately, the state um, Office of Grants and Local Services has not had any recent programs, um, but those are certainly things that, that we, we look at. 
And even when they do come up, they don't always necessarily fit. Um, but we do monitor grants and also it's kind of, you got to keep in mind, not every grant's a, a good grant. Oftentimes some of the smaller ones have reporting or support requirements that are so onerous that we end up burning more resources than, than the funding is often burned. Uh, specific to your question, Rachel, we have not looked at the infrastructure bill per se, but as Carl has mentioned, we have a variety of smaller grants that we have applied for. Some of them are onerous. Some of them have reporting requirements that are ridiculous, truth be told, but we do have quite a few grants on the books right now. And we're looking at um, some for recreation, some for other that we've received to see if we can reallocate those appropriations or those grants into other projects that we that may have risen to a more high priority level for the city than when they were originally granted. Thank you, Ms. Palmer. All right, well, we'll go ahead and move on to public comment. Uh, Mr. Chief Deputy City Clerk, any comments? Yes, Mayor. We've received no in-person cards. I would like to present the time for anyone participating to come up in-house. Mr. Quillacy? Chair Quillacy. Thank you, ma'am. I'm not here as Chair Quillacy, just a concerned citizen. I read through the staff report, the administrative report in, in detail, and I confess uh, either my arithmetic capabilities are sadly lacking or there's something not internally consistent with the numbers that you have seen on your charts today. I'll give you just an example. Uh, if we take Mr. Alameda's um, revision of general fund revenue from taxes, he said it's just over 6 million in the first half, and that was somewhere in the 40%, 42%, I think, area of total budget. That means that the total general fund budgeted revenue from taxes is around 15 million. But the tax table says 12 million. So I'm wondering where that other $3 million is coming from, or is that, is that a plug or is it just an error? I, I don't know. I can't, I can't make out from, from the arithmetic. Um, there is a projection that TOT is going to be 50% larger in the second half of the year than it was in the first half. Okay. No, no basis for making that projection. But measure C TOT is going to be increasing by between 150 and 175 percent, not 50 percent. And I think measure C TOT should track with TOT. So where is the extra money coming from that's being allocated or requested by staff or whatever? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, the proposal is to take an additional 42,000 from the general fund to uh, handle special fund expenditure adjustments when we just saw that there's only 4,400 left between the projected increases in revenue, no basis for that, minus the expenditures of 480,000 already dictated by city council. So I can't make sense of the numbers. And I'm hoping that before we get too far into this, that, that we get some rationale for the lack of internal consistency in the report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Quillacy. Any, any other comments, Weston? No more in-house. We'll move on to Zoom. We do have one raised hand on Zoom from Michelle Ellison. Michelle, you have the opportunity to unmute now. And you have the floor. Good morning, Michelle Ellison here. Um, I appreciate this mid-year budget review. And while there aren't that many proposed adjustments being made today, I still think it's important to keep in mind every time we develop and update our city budget, that climate change, you know, that we're remembering that climate change is the greatest existential threat we're facing and reducing emissions must be a top priority. For our budget, this means that we should carefully assess any proposed expenditure and ask if they are need versus a want, can they wait? And could that funding instead be directed to decarbonizing city operations, for example, 
uh, like replacing fossil fuel gas furnaces in city buildings with highly efficient electric heat pump systems that run on clean energy. A couple specific questions have come up about the budget before you. Is the proposed $50,000 uh, used for that trolley, is that trolley an electric trolley? If not, then we shouldn't move forward on that because as council member Lang referenced earlier, the city adopted a policy to replace our gas powered fleet with electric. So that's a question I had. And then also regarding measure C funding, you know, that's also supposed to be earmarked for climate mitigation measures towards which very little has been allocated to date. Uh, so I question the allocation of $150,000 for pickleball, for example, when we compare it to the urgency of reducing our emissions. And regarding the two proposed parking lot paving projects coming from that additional measure C funding that totals around $100,000 for those two parking lot paving projects, um, I, I question, you know, can we temporarily hold off on those and instead use that funding to reduce uh, city emissions by swapping out, for example, our gas furnaces in, in city buildings. So that's all for now. Thanks so much. Thank you, Michelle. We have one more raised hand from Bill Miley. Bill Miley, you have the floor. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please proceed. Good. Okay. Good morning. I want to talk a little bit about the future. And I've spoken about this in the past, about sales tax. We currently have a sales tax of seven and a quarter percent, which we've had forever. And recently, when going to Costco, I realized that the city of Oxnard has a sales tax of nine and a quarter. And those of you who have been to Costco in the last couple of years, you know, it's very hard to find a parking place to spend your money and pay nine and a quarter percent tax. So for each one cent or 1% increase in sales tax here in Ojai, we would generate close to two and a half million dollars. 2% increase would give us nine and a quarter, it would be $5 million. So I would encourage the city council to seriously consider placing a sales tax increase on the November ballot. Regarding the trolley, the purchase of a used trolley, since we mostly have, we all have gas um, operated trolleys now, having a spare is really important. $50,000 is a bargain. I understand they can cost up to 300 or 400. New electric ones are half a billion dollars. Oh, no, excuse me, <laughs> 500 plus thousand dollars. So I would encourage you to do that. And also from the standpoint of pickleball, that's an important activity, present term. And we need to meet our present term needs now, like the plaza and the Rainbow Bridge parking lot which does have a risk for people who might fall or injure themselves. It needs to be done now. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Miley. That's all on Zoom, Mayor. One note, there was one written public comment received by the clerk's office from Mr. Bill Miley, and we will send that to council immediately following this meeting. Excellent, thank you. All right, we will move on to discussion. It is 11.32, so let's um, limit uh, just a couple minutes. Who would like to begin? Well, <laughs> well, I'm tempted to just to make a motion that that we pass the budget, the, the amended budget. Um, and at the same time, I would like some clarification on Chair Quillacy's, Steve Quillacy, Mr. Quillacy. Um, uh, I understand he's not representing the, the commission, um, but I would like to have some um, clarification on that on the concerns that he raised in his comment. Yeah, I can easily do that. It's two points. So first on the uh, arithmetic side of what was presented to you versus the, the budget and in the staff report. So on general fund revenue side, um, it's going back to really that holistic approach. Remember that's that small number make up 80% of the budget. There's five different sources of general fund revenues that are not addressed in 
in today's presentation or in the staff report. Um, so those are revenues from other agencies, charges for current services, other revenues, recreation program revenues, and then finally transfers in from special funds. These equate in totality to just under $2 million. So that's why there's that differential there. But these are a typically pretty small, they aren't gonna impact the budget. And there was no meaningful need to modify any of those revenues. So that's why when you look at what's presented to the council today in terms of revenue and the bottom line, that it's not a totally equal match. Um, we could have gone into those, but we would have probably have been here for four hours to walk through all of those. No exaggerations. I, I've done that level of detail with councils before. Um, so that's on the arithmetic side. Um, and as I noted at the opening, there there was a, a, a typo on some of the revenues to date. So that's the arithmetic side. On the measure C side, the ratio, it's actually not one per one measure C versus the TOT. The differential is a little different. Um, Pam actually has it. I, I don't recall it off the top of my head, but that's why it's not a linear match on our TOT increase and our measure C increase. It, it's not a one per one ratio. But I, I believe that addresses the questions. But what's presented for adjustments in both the revenues and the expenditures are correct, even though we didn't get into the minutia of all the other revenue categories. Thank you. Oh, Council Member Lang, do you want to go ahead and make a motion? I will make a motion. And I also want to just uh, speak also to uh, to Michelle Ellison's point that, you know, what my understanding is that this that we are making this for this year. And I I believe that that next year's budget climate needs to be a number one priority. Um, so um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and move to approve the uh, adjustments to the budget and to um, and to move, move forward with this. Is there a second? Yeah, I will second that. And just a quick comment also um, to Ms. Ellison. Um, I would say to the Climate Emergency Committee that the change of pickleball courts from City Hall to Seoul Park is going to result in 50 cars and 50 cars worth of emissions going through the middle of downtown. Um, so you might consider that as well as, you know, there's a, a broader range than just knocking city cars. There's also uh, travel through downtown and that would have been a highly appropriate place for the Climate Emergency Committee to have weighed in. Um, but having been said, I certainly second the motion and am ready to take a vote. And I just once again want to say thank you and just a couple of points. I'm very excited about the reserves having lived through COVID and seeing it get super low and scary. Thank you for that. And and also, um, I would like to push for a slightly being from the Midwest a little bit more, maybe 75 percent. Um, uh, it's really excited about the conferences, the educational um, conferences and supporting staff. So that's really wonderful. Um, Thank you to Ms. Palmer. We're really excited about the streets and the roads and um, you're doing such a great job. So thank you. And excited uh, and also a great thank you to people who passed Measure C. And um, and it, strangely enough, it passed in March, 2020, right when COVID hit. So now we're really seeing the benefits and uh, we're so lucky that that group of people got together. And just a reminder that Measure C is really focused on trees, climate, deferred maintenance, um, and really excited about the communication and the newsletter and the website so we can really get some accurate information out there that is really going to be a huge step forward for all of us. So thank you, staff. And once again, going back to Councilmember Lang's point, climate change and Michelle Ellison is our greatest existential threat. So moving forward, I'm really looking forward to focusing on uh, reducing our carbon footprint. And with that, how about a roll call? Yes, ma'am. We have a motion by Councilmember Lang with a second by Councilmember Rule to adopt adjustments to the fiscal year 2023-2024 annual budget as identified. And I would just like to ask staff is if as identified is clear enough. Okay, roll call. Councilmember Lang. Yes. Mayor Sticks. Yes. Councilmember Rule. Yes. Motion passes. Great. Uh, and one more thank you to Finance Director Pam Greer. Thank you so much for all your hard work, Pam. Really appreciate it. And, and a final thank you to those um, public, the public who showed up 
to the public who looked through this and the public who showed up to listen and um, take in the information. Much, much, much appreciated that you were able to do that um, and always so welcome and so appreciated. Thank you. And I ditto that. Thank you all for being here. And with that, we will adjourn. <laughs>